Digno, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. For extra driving pleasure, the signal to look for is the yellow and black circle sign that identifies signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And for Sunday evening listening pleasure, the signal to listen for is this whistle that identifies the signal oil program, The Whistler. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now, the Whistler's strange story, Best Man. Waiting there in the crowd at Union Station, he tried to picture how she would look. Smiling, radiant Anna. Twelve weeks she's been gone on her personal appearance tour. Three months. And staying in Los Angeles, arranging for the opening of her new ice show, not seeing her, had only increased Edward McCreary's desire. Made him realize how much he wanted to marry her. He was determined to speak to her about it as soon as possible. As soon as he could talk to her alone, away from Sam Peters, her publicity agent. Yes, Edward told himself, they must settle it. And he was certain that she would agree. Her same wonderful smile as she came up the ramp from the trains assured Edward that he was right, and he hurried forward to see her. First section, arriving from Portland, Seattle, San Francisco, gate number four. Anna! Anna, here I am! Arriving from Portland. Oh, it is so good to see you again. So wonderful. (laughs) Sam, here he is, Sam. I found him. Oh, Edward, how are you? (laughs) How's the boy, Eddie? Got the show all ready to roll? Something for me to talk up? Beat the drums about? Yeah, hello, Sam. Yeah, everything's arranged. Ah, fine, fine. You always take good care of things, Ed. Oh, of course he does, Sam, and so do you. Both of you so wonderful. Always thinking of your honor. (laughs) (laughs) Slaves to the queen, eh, Eddie? Yeah. (laughs) Well, uh, my car's outside, Anna. If you're tired, perhaps I could drive you to your apartment and Sam... Whoa, wait a minute. Sorry, old boy. Sam's tired, too. And there's nothing to check here. The baggage is all set. Trunks being delivered to Anna's apartment. So all you have to do now, Ed, is deliver it. (laughs) All right. Come on. My little apartment. Oh, it is so wonderful to be back, to be home again. It's so very wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's all she talked about, Eddie. And she certainly deserves it after three months. Yeah, she does. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think the press deserves to know the queen of the ice skates is back in town, though, Sam. Don't you think? All right, uh, all right, all right. I'm on my way. <laughs> Night, Anna. Oh, Sam, where oh, are you going? Uh-huh, to beat those drums, gal, for you. Uh-huh. For you and... Oh, say, that's right. You haven't told Ed yet. You know, your little surprise. Oh, well, you go on, Sam. I'll tell him. <laughs> All right. Good night, Eddie. Surprise, Anna? Well, what's she talking about? Oh, Edward, something wonderful. Oh, Anna, with you, everything is something wonderful. Oh, but this is really, Edward. It will make the show even more sensational. Huh? Yes. You see, I have found a new partner, Edward. A wonderful new partner. New partner, but I... No, 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 you sit down. Let me tell you. It is all settled. He should be here any moment. Oh, you will like him, I know. (laughs) I I suppose. Well, any friend of yours. What's his name on it? Bergson. Howard Bergson. Howard Bergson? But Edward, what is it? Do you know him? Oh, no, no. No, no, I've never even heard the name before. You're lying, aren't you, Edward? And you know that Howard Burkson lied, too, when he told her that he didn't know you. It all had to do with another little deal in St. Louis several years ago. A deal that the two of you worked together. 
but with you leaving town without giving Howard his share. And so now he's back, tall, smooth, good-looking Howard Brexton. You wonder what sort of interest he's aroused in Anna. It's an unpleasant moment for you, isn't it, Edward? Very unpleasant. Then you have another one when the doorbell rings and Anna hurries to answer it. How are you, darling? Boy, I'm coming, Howard. Quickly, I want you to meet Edward. <laughs> of course, Edward. I can't wait. All I've been hearing is Edward. Edward McCreary. And this is... This is he. Edward Howard. Howard Brooks. <laughs> well, well, Mr. McCreary. Hello, Mr. Brooks. <laughs> Formal, aren't we? Oh, too formal. That's all the misters. Now it's Howard and Ed. Howard and Ed. That's fine. <laughs> Funny. What's that? Howard? Uh, why, the way you remind me of somebody, Ed. Somebody I knew real well, or so I thought. Well, small world, Howard. <laughs> yes, isn't it, Ed? Very small world. Small, wonderful world. <laughs> yeah, Anna, you're a darling. Got everything you figured out for yourself, haven't you? <laughs> Great little girl you manage, Ed. <laughs> Wonderful. I think so. So do I. Oh, Anna, darling, why don't you fix us a drink? We're all so... so agreeable. Oh, yes, I think a drink would be... Uh, wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Edward, the past comes calling, doesn't it? In the person of Howard Burkston. A man you cheated a few years ago in St. Louis. He's met Anna, managed to get her interested in him. And now he's to be part of the show, her ice skating partner. In the days that follow, you avoid him as much as possible. Then finally, you decide it's best to have a talk with him, find out what's on his mind. Well, well, if it isn't Mr. McCreary... I'm wondering how long you'd wait, old man. I'd rather not talk standing here. Well, come in. Not the fanciest dressing room, but it'll do until we get to understand each other. Exactly what do you mean by that? Sit down, Ed. Relax. Here, have a cigarette. I haven't opened the bar yet. You can cut out the cat and mouse stuff, Howard. Can I? Now, I believe you asked me exactly what I meant. Simple, old man. Well, get to it, get to it. You, uh, owe me some money, remember? Supposing I did. Well, it really wouldn't do any good. I wouldn't want to collect. Not from an old pal. You're building up to something, Brooks. You think so, huh? Well, you're making our little discussion easy. Painless. You're quite right. I am building up to something. A rather big letdown, Ed, for you. Now, wait a minute. Uh, Sit Right there, big man. When you're comfortable. Now sit there and listen. If you don't, I'll talk to somebody else. Anna, point out what a cheap double-dealing crook you are. That deal of yours, Ed. I'm in the clear. But you're not. Go easy, Howard. Go easy. I always do. And this time I'll go very easy. Because the way is paved with beauty. With big dough. What do you mean? Anna... Sweet, adorable, wonderful Anna. Well, sorry you're so interested, Ed, because you're at the end of the line as far as Anna is concerned. I think that's something for Anna to decide. Well, perhaps she already has. Now, if you want to risk the embarrassment, go ahead, ask her. She doesn't care about you. Not that way. She told you that? She told me that. You're a friend, a devoted, wonderful friend. Nothing more, Ed. Understand nothing. So you can save your neck and your dreams all at once. I don't know what you mean. I mean stay away from us. Anna and me. We're good skates, Ed. Meant for each other. You're her partner in the show. Nothing else. Think so? Well, just go right on watching, old man, but from the sidelines. You'll see friend Burkston moving in. Good. Setting up housekeeping. Why, you... It'll be rather nice married to that little number. Delightful girl. Pretty, nice figure. And a wonderful bank account. That's the part I love. You'll never get away with it, Howard. I'm pretty fast in my skates, old man. Don't bet against me. I'm counting on one thing. Anna, she's an intelligent girl. She's a girl, Ed, the weaker sex. And I'm going to be a knight in shining armor and on silver skates. Now, you go on back to your hotel room, curl up with a copy of Hans Sprinker. And remember, keep out of it. Leave us alone. And if I don't? You heard me. I said, leave us alone. <laughs> A 
$20 signal gasoline book is being sent to Mrs. G.L. Matheson of San Francisco, California, as a token of our appreciation for this limerick. A visiting driver from Mars complained of Earth's sluggish cars. Then he tried signal gas and was last seen to pass three comets and two shooting stars. Signal, signal, signal gasoline. Your time will go, time will go for the gasoline. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't guarantee that, like the driver in the limerick, you'll be passing comets when you power your car with signal. But the chances are you will be driving with your head in the clouds after you switch to the famous go farther gasoline. After all, lightning starts, flashing pickup, and smooth, effortless power, these things just naturally go hand in hand with signal's good mileage. They're all the result of the more efficient performance today's signal gasoline helps your motor deliver. So whether you're looking for economy or just real driving pleasure, remember you get both when you get signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. Anna's new skating partner has made it all very clear to you, hasn't he? Yes, he intends to marry Anna. And if you try to stop him, interfere, he'll expose you. Tell Anna about that uh, incident in St. Louis. That you're really not Ed McCreary, but Edward Fenley, actually a common thief. You're trapped, aren't you? There's nothing you can do for the moment. Only hope that Anna herself will be able to resist the deadly charm of the suave, smooth-talking Howard Burks. Then two weeks later, opening night of the ice show, you stop in at your favorite bar. As you sit there alone, a thick, heavy-set man drifts over towards you, Sid Walker, the newspaper columnist. Well, 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 Mr. McQuill. Huh? Oh, hello, Walker. How's the keyhole columnist these days? <laughs> Haven't you heard? I've switched to transoms, not as much grab. Oh, that explains it, then. Explains Your right eye isn't as bloodshot as it used to be. <laughs> you mind if I join you? You already have. Uh, you must be lucky at cards, McCreary. What? Yeah, you know, lucky at cards, unlucky at love. What's eating you? Oh, nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, I feel great. I just heard something, and uh, I feel great. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we ought to congratulate uh, Miss Ahmed Jensen. What are you talking about? Well, I hear she's getting some sense into that pretty little head of hers. She's finally tossed over a two-bit chisel like you. Now, wait a minute. Get out, Way off, Not on you? your life. I heard something tonight that's going to make me feel good for a week, maybe two weeks. Hey, you want to know what it is? Okay. I heard Anna finally found Mr. Wright. She's going to get married soon, so they tell me. Where'd you get that? She's in love, McCreary. Oh, anybody can see that. She suddenly found the man in her life. And it isn't you, pal. Who told you? I got it <laughs> right from the horse's mouth, so to speak. You're lying. You're okay, lying. Okay, okay, so I'm lying. But when you're suddenly asked to be best man, don't say I didn't warn you. You stare at Sid as he grins, turns, and walks away, and you're certain he's not lying. As Howard Bergson told you, he is going to take Anna away from you, isn't he, Ed? Unless you do something about it, and you'll have to act quickly. The anger within you mounts steadily as you hurry to the ice palace. And by the time you arrive, your mind is made up. Somehow, you're going to stop Howard. You're not going to let him step in, shatter everything you've waited for. Then backstage, looking for Anna, you run into Howard instead. Hello, old man. Oh, oh where's Anna? Oh, she'll be here in a minute. Nice crowd out there, don't you think? Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you're not doing anything after the show, I'm throwing a little party at my place for Anna. You'll be there? Sorry, no. Fine, I was hoping you couldn't make it. <laughs> That'll give me more time with Anna. We have so much to talk about, you know. Look, Brixton, if you think Anna is going to be crazy enough to marry you, you're crazy. <laughs> Am I? Oh, now, Eddie boy, how could she resist me? I'm warning you. Look, I'll make a deal with you, a little side bet. If Anna isn't Mrs. Brixton by the end of the season, I'll give her up. Leave the field open for you. And if she does, Mario? If you lose, old man, you have to be the best man. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Wait a minute. I'd like something better. Yes, I'm sure Anna would like that, too. Instead of being best man, you give the bride away. Why, you... 
Wait a minute. Cut it out. You go away. Get away. Get away. I, I owe him know. this. That's enough. That's enough. Now leave him alone, Ed. Next time, Burks. Next time, I'll kill you. Edward. Edward, what have you done? Oh, oh Howard. Howard, are you all right? Yeah, Anna. Oh. I guess so. Get up, Burks. You're not hurt. Get up. Get up. Edward. Leave him alone. But, Anna. You've I... done enough for one evening. Please. Please go. Sure. Sure, I'll go. There's little sleep for you that night, is there, Ed? And then the following morning at your apartment, you have a visitor. Hello, Ed. Oh, oh Sam. Come here, Sam. Come here. I'm going to make it short, Ed. It's about last night. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess I sort of lost my head. That was a pretty crazy thing to do. Sure it was. Sure, I know. Sit down, Sam. Anna was pretty sore at you. Yeah, she had every reason to be. But she isn't anymore. She, she thinks you need a rest, Ed, a vacation. A vacation? No. I, I think so, too, Ed. Now, it'll do you a lot of good to get away for a little while, a month or so. Now, Anna asked me to take over the business and manage it while you're gone. But now, don't say no right away, please. Think it over, Ed. Think it over. <laughs> It's the last thing you want now, Ed, a vacation. It would only give Howard more time to be alone with Anna. You know you've got to stay close by, talk to Anna, do everything you can to prevent her from becoming Mrs. Burkston. But even if you do, you know that the threat Howard holds over you will still be there, that somehow if you ever hope to marry Anna, you'll have to get Howard out of the way for good. You think about it the rest of the day, and as night comes, an idea you had in mind begins to take shape. A very definite shape. Hello. Uh, Ed, Stan. Oh, yeah. Hello, Ed. I, uh, I've decided to take Anna's advice about taking a vacation. Oh, fine, fine. But I, I'd, I'd like to have you check the books before I go. Oh, really? Yeah, that won't be necessary. Well, can you come over to my apartment tonight? Well, sure, but as I you said... You say uh, around 11. I'll have the books in order by then. It won't take long, just a couple of hours, maybe. Well, all right. All right, if it'll make you happy. You've started your plan in motion, haven't you, Ed? Yes. And the next step takes you to the Ice Palace backstage to find Howard. The performance has already started. You find him in the wings, ready to go on. Hello, Howard. Well, the slugger himself. Look, Ed. Ed, take it easy, will you? Take it easy. Listen, I, I'm sorry about last night. I, I lost my head, that's all. I owe you for that belt on the chin. All right, all right, Joe. Look, I, I'd like to talk to you. I'm sorry, I'm on in a few seconds. Well, how about after the show? It's important. It is, huh? Okay, after the show. I'll drop over to your apartment. Uh, no, no. No, let's, uh, let's meet at your apartment. Okay, my place. See you after the show. Oh, that's my cue. Hey, that Bakeston's pretty good, isn't he, McCreary? Huh? Oh, well, it's you, Sid, the boy columnist. Yeah, that Bakeston is real good. He and Anna make a nice pair. Yeah, sure, sure they do. I, uh, I hear you and Handsome went a couple of fast rounds last night. That's so? Hey, you won. Oh, I was sorry to hear that. Uh, what else is new? Call me up sometime when I'm not so busy, huh? Sure, sure, maybe I'll do that. I'll give you a call. Uh, uh, Sid! Yeah? As a uh, matter of fact, I... I do have an item you might be interested in. Oh, you don't say. Yeah, it's on the level. Uh, only I can't tell you anything about it until after the show. Uh, why don't you give me a ring at my apartment? You, uh, kidding? No? No, I'm not. Okay. All right, I'll give you a call. Hi, Ed. Oh, come in, Sam. Come in. You uh, did say 11, didn't you? Yeah, you're right on the nose. Here, oh, over here, Sam. All the books are on my desk. Now, look, Ed, look. This isn't at all necessary, you know. Like I said, Anna, trust no, you and no, I... No, no, Sam. I want everything in order before I leave. I may be away a month, maybe two. If that's okay with Anna. Oh, you know it'll be, Ed, but heaven... No, no, please, please. Okay, okay. Yeah, here. Here are the books, Sam. It won't take you long. I'm... I'm going to lie down for a while. Terrific. Oh? Yeah, but 
getting a lot of them lately. Now, you see, Anna is right. You do need a rest. Okay, pal, go on. Take your nap. Wake me up when you're finished. Hmm? Sure, sure. In the meantime, if anyone calls, uh, tell them I'm not feeling well. Uh, go on to bed. I don't want to talk to anyone. You understand? Sure, sure. You can depend on me. Yes, you can depend on Sam, can't you, Ed? He's going to play a very important part in your plan. He's going to be your alibi, isn't he? You leave him in the small alcove, sitting at your desk, and hurry into the bedroom, stretch out on the bed. Several minutes later, you hear the phone ring. Instantly, you're on your feet. You take the gun from your bureau drawer, tiptoe to the door, open it a crack. You see Sam leave the alcove, move out of sight into the living room. Hello. Yes? Who? Oh, oh, Sid, yeah, yeah, how are you? Quickly, you step out into the hall, slip out the front door, close it softly behind you. Come on in. Sit down. Thanks. No, I won't be here long. I just came over to finish something I started to do last night. Look, what are you talking about? What's on your... Better put that gun away before you hurt yourself, old man. If you think you can scare me... I didn't come over just to scare you, Howard. I'm going to stop a wedding. Your wedding to Anna. Call it a divorce in advance. It's done, isn't it, Ed? Two shots and your worries are over. Howard Burkston is dead. You go out to your car and hurry back to your own apartment building. Fortunately, your apartment is only on the second floor. You step into the phone booth in the lobby downstairs, dial your own number, knowing that Sam will go into the living room to answer it. This will give you plenty of time. You listen while your phone rings twice. Hang up quietly and hurry up the short flight of stairs Reach your apartment quickly and carefully open the front door. As you close the door, you see the light is still burning in the alcove where Sam has been working on the book. You sigh with relief as you enter your bedroom. Good old Sam. I knew I could depend on you, pal. You've been grand. Just grand. Here's a word of wisdom about a major purchase that many of you drivers will be making during the coming winter months. A new battery. When you compare the cost of different batteries, remember this. The important thing is not the first cost, but the cost per month. And that, of course, depends upon how long the battery lasts. Measured by that yardstick, one of today's most economical batteries is the new Extra Long Life Signal Deluxe Battery. Instead of being guaranteed for only 12 or 18 months, like most batteries, the new Signal Deluxe batteries are guaranteed for a full 30 months on a service basis. The secret of this amazingly long life is their microporous all-rubber separators, which have been called the greatest advance in battery construction in 20 years. What's more, because these microporous separators hold twice as much acid solution between the plates, Signal Deluxe batteries deliver up to 35% more power. So before you buy any battery, get your signal dealer's generous trade-in offer for your old battery plus his convenient credit terms. See for yourself that it actually costs less per month to enjoy the quicker starting, the long dependability of today's finest battery, a Signal Deluxe battery. It was all so simple, wasn't it, Ed? Killing Howard Burkston. And your alibi is perfect. You're certain the neighbors heard the shots and called the police. But you'll have Sam Peters, your alibi, who'll swear that you couldn't possibly have left the apartment without him seeing you. That you were in your bedroom when Howard was murdered. Sam will swear to that. You wait there in the darkness for an hour or so, and then decide to go back out into the living room and see how Sam is coming along with the books. Sam? Sam? You're a little surprised not to find Sam at the desk. Quickly, you move through the rest of the apartment. 
Sam is gone. For an instant, panic sweeps over you. And then your eyes fall on a piece of paper at the typewriter. Your hand trembles as you pick up the paper and read, Dear Ed, I thought it best not to awaken you. I decided to let the books go until we got back. I was surprised when Sid Walker called a few minutes ago. Said you had a tip for him. I thought we had kept it quiet, but apparently you knew that Anna and I were leaving tonight to be married. Anna joins me in wishing you the best. Say. Open up, Miss Perry. This is the police. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Remember, if you would like the fun of having your friends hear a limerick of yours on The Whistler, the address to which to send it is Signal Oil Company, Los Angeles 55, California. All limericks become the property of Signal Oil Company. Those selected for use on the Whistler will be chosen by our advertising representatives on the basis of humor, suitability, and originality. So, of course, they must be your own composition. Featured in tonight's story were Willard Waterman, Jeff Corey, Wally Mayer, and Anna Rossellini. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by William Frug, music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember, at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. When you give to the community chest, you're helping not just one organization, but many worthy causes that directly benefit four out of every ten families. Think of that when you're deciding how much to give to the community chest. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.